The other day I noticed a new water simulation add-on called Cell Fluids. It had reached the front page of Blender Market, which is not easy to achieve. I took a better look and bought it instantly because it looked useful. So under the hood, Cell Fluids is actually a geometry nodes and simulation nodes setup and it creates these cool and convincing water simulations in real time. And that is amazing. If you have any experience with water simulation, you know that they are far from real time. It's important to understand that this is a trick. It is not real water simulation and it is not based on particles. The add-on developer calls it 2.5D simulation. And that is why it runs so fast, but it also means that the system has limitations. They are clearly stated on the product page. If you are considering buying this add-on, it's best to understand how it works. The goal of this video is to show you how to use the add-on. It's actually quite easy and intuitive, and hopefully this video helps you decide if the add-on is right for you or not. So when you buy the add-on, you'll be able to download the files. You mainly need this zip file, so download it without unzipping it. The PDF file is a written manual, and the blend files are example scenes. To install the add-on in Blender, go to Edit Preferences, Add-ons, click Install, find the zip file that you downloaded, and click Install Add-on. Activate it, and the add-on is in the end panel under Cell Fluids. To create a new simulation, you can click the New Fluid button, and that creates a box where the fluid simulation will happen. This is the domain, and you can change its um, size on X and Y, and also its height. Interestingly, the X and Y values affect the performance. The bigger the values, the slower the performance. But the depth value does not affect the performance. So just set it to exactly what you need. Then you have a couple of collections. Right now, even if you play the animation, nothing will happen. So we need to set the fluid collections. First we have initial, so I'm going to press this button and it will create the initial fluids collection for me. So I'll click on this collection and now I can go to the 3D view and press Shift A and add some objects. They can be any shape you like. I'll add a cube and you'll see that right away something is happening. I can add also a sphere. And now if I play the animation, the initial fluid objects created some initial fluids and it dropped into the simulation domain and it is now being simulated. If you enable material preview, you'll see that we have a very nice water material already. For these initial fluid objects, you can actually go to the object properties, viewport display and change the display type to wire. Okay, now if we play from the start, you can see the initial fluids and then they just drop into the domain and they are simulated. And you can see that we have some foam, which disappears over time. We have ripples. And as I said earlier, this is not real water simulation, but it looks very convincing. If you look at the first keyframe, you'll see that the water is already stretching from the initial object all the way to the floor. So this is because of the trick that this system uses, uh, and there is no way to avoid this. So this is one limitation that you may want to watch out for. So that is initial fluid. If I select the domain again, I'll get my options again, and I can create the inflow collection. So let's just grab the sphere, shift D and duplicate it, and then press M, and move it to the inflow collection. And then try to simulate again. And this should help you understand what inflow does. Unlike initial fluid, it doesn't just generate a limited amount of initial fluid, but it creates a constant inflow of water. This object can be animated. Uh, right now, if I move it, nothing will happen. That is because uh, the whole simulation has been cached. I can select the domain and change anything here. Let's just set this to 11 and then back to 10. 
and that will reset the simulation. Go to the beginning of the animation, press play, and move around this object, and you'll see how it creates water exactly where it is. And I can create keyframes for this object. And now the water is simulated as uh, this object moves. Next, we have Outflow, which will create a collection for objects that will allow uh, water to be drained out of the simulation domain. So let's create the collection, select it, and create a new object, such as a monkey. And let's try to simulate. And you'll see this vortex. This is basically because the monkey is creating a hole at the bottom of the simulation domain and the water is draining through it. So again, this looks quite convincing for a fake effect. Uh, so let me delete these initial fluid objects. And this one I'll make smaller so that it generates less water. And let's make the monkey bigger to see the effect better. Make it wireframe. Okay, so now we can clearly see where the outflow is happening. Next, we have ground and effectors. And these are two different ways to create objects that will collide and interact with the water. The difference is that ground is for static objects and effectors is for animated objects that can interact with the water. So let's try the ground first. And simulate from the start. And you'll see the water colliding with these objects and then eventually flowing over them. Let's create a larger domain so that um, it is not filled up so quickly. And now you can see the effect of these uh, ground objects more clearly. So if we are simulating a river uh, with uh, rocks and stuff, then the whole riverbed and any rocks in it will be a ground object and we'll see a demo scene a little bit later. Now let's create effectors and an effector object. Now I can start simulating. And if I move this object, you'll see how it creates ripples and some foam in the water. So that is what effectors do in a nutshell. If I just let it stay here and simulate, you'll see that unlike ground objects, effectors do not stop the water uh, as much. They just influence the surface with additional waves and foam. Now this is a little bit uh, hard to see, and this might be a good opportunity to show the set render settings button. If you click on it, it will recommend changing a couple of settings for EV and cycles. And it's really nice that it doesn't just change them, but it shows you what it's going to change and it even gives you the option to change it or not. So I'm going to press OK. And then simulate again. And now you should be able to see the effect of this effector a little bit more clearly because uh, we don't have the EV denoising in the viewport anymore. And actually, I hadn't set up the effectors fully, even though they kind of already work. We have to press this Setup Effector Modifiers button. And then simulate again. Yes, and now you should see the effect of the effectors even more clearly. Uh, it creates a lot more foam and waves. And as with any sort of simulation, keep in mind that results get cached. Uh, so here, for example, I can see the ripples that I created in the previous um, uh, simulation. 
So all I need to do is change something, for example, rescale this uh, sphere and try again. And now the simulation will happen in real time and not from the cache. Then we have some additional settings. Um, time scale can be cool for slow motion effects. So here we, we can see the water flowing into the domain much, much slower if I set um, time scale to 0 0.1. And I can also change it in the middle of the animation, which is cool. So now it will start flowing a lot um, faster. And there are some additional post effect. There is post displacement, which will displace the water a little bit. There is post noise, which gives some noise to the water, additional foam, so that enables and disables these foam objects. Fill sides will fill the sides of the domain, and then fill bottom will fill the bottom. Now here is a feature that I absolutely love, the bake flow maps. So currently I have stopped the animation and simulation, and I have this result here. If I just press this button, this will remove the whole simulation aspect of this add-on, but it leaves me with the exact water model that I had before clicking the button. Now, if I play the animation, you'll see that I have the illusion of the water flowing without changing its shape. And that can be great for creating rivers and stuff like that. I'll show you an example in a second. Now let's check out the demo files. By that, I mean the blend files that come with the uh, cell fluids add-on. The first one is this waterfall. And you can see how it filled out this river in real time. And we have nice foam simulation around the waterfall. So very nice. And make sure to check out how the collections are set up. So we have the ground collection, which is the whole riverbed. We have this inflow object is just a simple cube which adds water over and over we have some initial fluid which is outside of the simulation so currently it does nothing you can just place it inside and then it will do something but i don't think it is meant to do it in uh, this scene so let's undo and we have this outflow object uh, which makes sure that the river doesn't overflow so when the water reaches this place the simulation will start losing water. This scene is a good candidate for baking flow maps. So let's say that we reach this point. I'll select the domain and click bake flow maps. And now we have a seamlessly flowing river, which we can use in a scene that doesn't need to be simulated. It just needs to feature a river. Another similar scene Again, we have the ground objects here and actually outflow and um, initial fluid are outside the simulation. The other important part is this inflow object. Again, just a cube that will keep adding fluid to the simulation. Again, looks great and you can um, bake the flow map at the end to have a seamless looping effect. And finally, we have this uh, beach simulation, which is a very common test in water simulation. So here we have this initial fluid. I don't think we have any inflow objects. Yeah, they're outside. Um, the ground is obviously all of these rocks and the beach itself. The outflow object is also outside. And then we have an effector, which is this box here. And what it does is it rotates and pushes the water and that creates the waves. So if you try to simulate this with a standard fluid simulator using particles such as flip fluids or blenders manda flow, it will easily take days and weeks to create, tweak and render the animation. But with cell fluids, you can do it in real time. So these demo scenes should show you what the intended use of the add-on is. 
One thing that you should note is the size or scale of these simulations. All of them are around 10 to 20 to 30 meters, and we are simulating a relatively large body of water. If you want to simulate something larger, that shouldn't be a problem. You just have to increase the X and Y uh, size so that the domain can encompass your simulation. The simulation might get slower, but it should be possible. But what is hard to achieve is very fine simulation. So for example, I was testing filling a small room using cell fluids, and I found it difficult to create small inflow objects. A possible solution for that is to scale up your small scene so that it is not in real scale, but say 10 times larger. That was my in-depth overview of the cell fluids add-on. I think it was a good overview of how the add-on works and what some of the limitations may be. So have fun with your water simulations.